To be 19 and to go from where he was, he's able to push the ball and he's super, super confident. Like when he was with us in the summer, as a 19 year old, you're coming in and you're, you're coming to a situation where you don't know kind of how things are going and who's who and where how you're gonna fit in. And then he went with Mahmoud and found a role, uh, has succeeded in that role. Confidence has built. I think some of the games that he played with us, like when we were uh, struggling in games and he would go in there towards the end of the game and he would play well, gain some confidence from that. But uh, yeah, he's come a long way as a 19 year old in just a short period of time. So we're definitely happy with the growth that he's had. This is Dejan Nix, rookie from Alaska. Here's Nix with the Euro, rolls it over the front of him. Oh, Nix, one way street, it's to drive to the basket. This is Nix. 19 year old Nix, it's a three. Dejan, I'd like to start from the very beginning. So, Born in Fairbanks, Alaska, raised in Anchorage. For a lot of people, Alaska seems like a world of its own. But growing up there, how was basketball first introduced to you? Um, basketball was first introduced from my grandpa. Like I played football first and then basketball came along after. He, he was a multi-sport type of person. He played volleyball, basketball, football, basketball. He just played everything. He just Whenever I wasn't playing football, he just took me to a basketball court outside because like during the summer, it was all right with temperature, but he would take me outside during the summer and just we would just go shoot, go shoot shots, layups, and just do whatever with the basketball because we played basketball and football during the summer, it was mostly basketball at the time. And at the age of 13, your mom actually suggests that you move to Las Vegas to not only be closer to family, but at the same time, have more of the possibility of being inside of the competitive world of basketball. How do you feel like that move actually propelled you into the world of competitive hoops? Uh, I think that move helped me a lot. Just playing basketball in Alaska wasn't as, as competitive as, as it is now. And back then the lower 48s were a lot better than basketball in Alaska. So it was just her making that decision, her being strong and just making that move helped me and my family a lot because I wouldn't be where I am right now if it wasn't for her making that decision right now. And you flash forward a little bit. Back in 2019, you end up deciding to commit to attending to UCLA, but then you decommit and decide, you know what, I'm forgoing my college eligibility and I'm instead joining the G League Ignite. And you were able to participate with Ignite in their inaugural season in the bubble. How do you feel like that season or what do you feel like that season actually revealed to you about your game? Um, I think that season helped me a lot. Just taught me a lot of stuff I got to work on especially being in the bubble, playing against older men. That was going to eventually happen, playing against older men. Right. Uh, better Guys that are better than me, quicker, faster. Just, it helped me a lot. Just I got to go back in the gym every single day, just get better, faster, get in shape, and just get in my extra reps up. And do you feel like the G League Ignite as a whole was necessary for this league? I think, yeah. I think it was very necessary for this league. They needed... I think G League Ignite, by them creating, or the people creating G League Ignite helped a lot of people, especially kids coming out of high school, if they want to attend college or go straight to being a pro, plus doing schooling at the same time. So G League Ignite, they provided schooling, housing, and then just the chance to play with NBA vets and coach. So I think that's just better for myself than going to UCLA where I was originally going to do. Right. And shortly after that, you ultimately ended up signing the two-way deal with the Rockets, which had you splitting time between them over there with the Rockets and here with the RGV Vipers. What's been the main goal for you ever since arriving here at the Valley? Uh, the main goal for me is just going out there, just being a point guard. I know the start of the season, I was just getting into it, like probably like in Training training camp, when the first training camp started, I was early games, I was just trying to be that trying to be that point guard that everybody just liked instead of scoring. And then throughout the whole season I've gotten into a scoring first mentality and then also getting my team involved and then started regular season scoring a lot and then towards the end of the season I'm trying to just be a point guard where if, if the Rockets call me up I won't have to take 
I know I'm not going to be taking 20 shots a game, so I just got to be a point guard, get more assists and points, and get a lot of rebounds because I'm a bigger guard. And it's even safe to say that we've seen the evolution of Dacia Nix because your confidence has just grown tremendously from the start of the season up until now. And throughout this entire time, what do you feel like has been fueling this assertiveness for you out on the court recently? I think just that chip on the shoulder that I had, especially coming out of draft, draft night, I wasn't really drafted. So I think that was the biggest biggest thing I had to overcome throughout this whole time. I still am overcoming it because I didn't get drafted, but I think just that chip on my shoulder and just proving everybody wrong. Dacian Nix has solidified himself as one of the most physical floor generals in the NBA G League. Most notably known for his strength and ability to create for others off the dribble, Nix can easily play either position in the backcourt while confidently knocking down shots. Yes, we definitely see you be very vocal. I, I like to compare you a lot to a former player of ours, uh, Montrez Harold. I feel like you have that real passion and that aggression on the court, which is phenomenal to see. And clearly the Rockets saw it as well, because on February 15th, they ultimately converted your two-way deal into a standard NBA contract for the next four years. Tell me, what kind of emotions were you feeling when you actually heard the news? Uh all types of happy. I was, everybody was contacting me. I was just getting a lot of support, especially coming from Alaska. Everybody supported me since since the day I committed to UCLA and all the way until now. Just the support and then them trusting, trusting the process in me, the Rockets trusting the process in me and just what I'm doing and they want me to continue what I'm doing until I actually go back up there again. And how are you looking to take advantage of that opportunity now? Uh, I think just getting the extra reps, especially being down here. It's not as it's not as much as being up there, but just being down here, just getting those extra reps, getting those extra shots, them extra sprints down the court and all that during practice and just being ready and just watching film on the Rockets. And ultimately, a lot of times people usually have a why, a why as to why they do certain things or why they want to accomplish certain achievements. Is there somebody in particular that you feel like motivates you to want to be great? Um, I think just everybody above me that's been in the NBA starting from all the reasons the NBA was created until now, especially uh, when I was born, LeBron was drafted. So it was just his progression all the way until now is just the reason why I want to be in the NBA. I and mean, like, he's been 18 years, continue. That's what I want to do. And just taking care of my body like he's doing right now. And now recently, the Vipers currently find themselves now 15 and five. In your opinion, what do you feel like is going to be the deciding factor to be able to make a successful playoff run? I think we're going to be good regardless, even if I'm there, if the Rockets call me up or not. I think just we're going to be good regardless. We all like each other. We're all group, a good group of guys. We all, we all cooperate pretty well. We all like each other. I think that's just the biggest thing is liking each other. And the locker room is always a good place to come back to because nobody really is a cancer on the team. I would say nobody is a cancer on the team. I think that's just the biggest thing, just a locker room guy is that Anthony Lamb. So he always keeps people in check. He always hypes up the locker room. I think just that's the biggest part of us being a good team. And then and the coaching staff, especially Mahmoud, great coach, assistant coaches, they put us through everything we need to go through. And then I think championship is just, is gonna be on us. And what do you feel like you contribute to that locker room? Um, I know I'm the youngest guy in the locker room. I think I contribute a lot, especially because I'm not really a talker. I observe a lot more than talking. I know that people don't really see that, especially when I'm on the court, but in the locker room or off the court, I, I observe a lot more. So like someone's down on yourself, I try to go help them up. Uh, we play 2K, so I think that's that helps us a lot. We play 2K Madden, uh, Call of Duty. I think that's just a good thing. We just always with each other and just we're always happy with each other. And we're seeing so much coming from you and you're still so, so young. You're gonna continue to do big things, but you're now entering this new chapter in your life. What are you calling this chapter and why? Um, I would probably call this chapter beginning after the beginning, because I think the beginning was UCLA. I think that's, that was the beginning, uh, committing there and just decommitting. Then, and then after the beginning is probably that two-way spot that I just got, I mean, that I got before, and then the contract was the actually beginning. I think that's what I was calling it. Well, we're excited to see you, and I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you. Thank you.